In this video, we're going to explore macros in Access. So I have a database. This is actually a coffee company. And if you notice in the navigation pane on the left, I have five tables, customers, orders, products, etc., one query, two forms, and two reports. Uh, what is a macro? A macro is a series of actions that you can program so that you can automate repetitive tasks. So you can record a macro and then you can run it as often as you like to automate um, something that you do on a regular basis. There are two basic categories of macros in Access. There is what's called a standalone macro and an embedded macro. And standalone macros actually are separate database objects. So once you create a standalone macro, it will show in the navigation pane on the left. And this separate object can be run independently. And that's the first type of macro we're going to do. The second type of macro is an embedded object. It does not show in the navigation pane. It is actually embedded in an object or a control and so when a, an event occurs, so for example, a control could be a button, and when someone clicks on that button, which is an event, then that would trigger an embedded macro. And we're going to explore both of these. So let's start by creating a standalone macro. So on our ribbon, we're going to click the Create tab, and then we're going to click the Macro button in the Macros and Code group on the right. And then notice it's going to walk you through selecting the tasks you want to do in order. So the first task I want to do, if I click on my drop down arrow, is I want to actually open a report. Let's assume that I need to always open the two reports when I come in to this database. So open report is the task that I want to do. Then I'm going to select the report name. And in this case, it's customer's report. And then I could tweak any of these other parameters, but I'm going to leave the defaults. The second action that I want to do, or the second task that I want this macro to do, is I want it to open another report. So the first report that I'm opening is the customer report. The second report that I'm going to open is the orders report. So when I execute this macro, both reports should open automatically. Now I'm happy with my macro, so I'm going to click up on the tab up here at the top where it says Macro 1, or I could click the Save button up on the left. I'm going to right click, select Save, and I'm going to give my macro a name of Open Report Macro. Then I'm going to hit OK. Notice immediately now I have a new object in my navigation pane called Open Macro, Open, mac um, open Report Macro. I'm going to close my interior window where my macro was. Now I'm going to test my macro by double clicking on it on the navigation pane on the left. And notice the tasks that I programmed, the customer report opens and the orders report opens. So now I'm going to close all those and that is an example of a standalone macro. Now I'm going to show you another macro which is an embedded macro. So I'm going to open up a form that I have called the main menu form. And notice right now it's a pretty bland form. There's only one button, the exit button. And I'm going to take this form into design view. So I'm right clicking up on the name and then going into design view. And I'm going to add another button. And when you click on that button, it's going to open this sales rep form on the left. So up at the top, you should see you now have a new ribbon called the Form Design Tools. And you should be on the Design tab of that ribbon. And you should see in the center section that there's something called Controls. And there's one that has a button shaped to it with X's on it. And I want you to click on that to activate that. And then I'm going to draw in the middle of my form, I'm just going to take it from left to right, a button. And the command button wizard then pops up. It asks me what kind of category of activity I want to do or action. And I'm going to pick form operations. And then specifically what action do I want to do. And I'm going to pick open form. Then I'm going to click the next button. 
Then it asks which of the forms, and I only have two to choose from, do I want to open? And I'm going to select the sales rep form, and I'm going to hit next. Then I'm going to stick with the default, which is I want to open my form and all the records. I don't want to change anything. Hit next. Then I could put a picture on my button, but in this case, I'm going to put text, and I'm going to say open sales rep form. So I type that in. I'm going to hit next. And then it wants me to give my button a name. I'm going to call it CMD because it's a command button. And I'm going to call it Open Form. Spell. And I'm going to hit Finish. And now notice I have a button. And I can move that over and try to align it. Um, that says Open Sales Form. I'm going to save my form. And then in order to test my button, which has the embedded macro, I'm going to open my form in form view. And I'm going to click on my button. And up pops my sales rep form. So that button actually executed. When I clicked on that button and triggered that event, it actually invoked my embedded macro, which opened this form. So that's an embedded macro. We're going to do one more type of macro, and this is actually a, a subtype of an embedded macro, and it's called a data macro. And a data macro is a type of embedded macro, but it is only used with table events. So when you add or delete or update data in a table, you could execute an embedded, a specific kind of embedded macro called a data macro. So um, on my, I'm going to open up my orders table so you can see that I actually have an empty field in my orders table called expected ship date. And I am going to say that whenever an order comes in, I want the expected ship date to be 14 days from the order date. That's when we expect to ship the order. So I'm going to actually put in a data macro to do that automatically. So I'm going to take my table and I'm going to put it in design view. And notice when I do that up at the top, there's something called create data macros on that design tab. I'm going to click on that. And then I want to do what's called a before change event, which means before the record is saved, I want whatever task I'm going to record I want that to be triggered and occur before the record is saved. So what do I want to do? I want to do what's called a set field, which means I want to set the value in a field. Then it's going to ask me for the name of the field, and I know the name of the field that I want to set is called expected ship date, EXP ship date. And once I start typing it, I should be able to choose it from the list. And then it says, well, what do you want the value of that to be? And I want that to actually be order date. And as I start typing, you should see that order date is a field that comes up. And then plus 14. So I'm taking the order date and I'm adding 14 days to it. All right, and I'm happy with that now. So I'm going to, I can hit save up here or I can hit save right here. They do the same thing. I'm going to close this. I'm going to actually save my table in design view and close it. Now, in order to show this action occurring, I'm going to open um, demonstrate it for you. I'm going to open up the orders table. And notice nothing happened with the ship date. But I'm going to actually go in and pretend like I was just order entering the order date right now. So I'm going to retype. 2014. I'm going to tab off of that field to the next field, and I'm going to go down one record to move off of that record. And notice automatically, without me having to type anything, the expected ship date um, was calculated. So the data macro was invoked. I'm going to pick um, a later record. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to retype it as if I were typing it in the first time. And I will tell you, this data macro would have probably been set up when you created the table so that every time you added in a new order, the expected ship date would be automatically calculated. 
I'm going to move off of this record to the next record. Notice when the pencil goes away, that event is triggered, and now my expected shift date is calculated. So again, there are two basic, I'm going to close my table here. There are two basic types of macros in Access. There's a standalone macro, which would you create. It's an independent object, and it can be executed from the navigation pane, or an embedded macro, which you create and is embedded or tied to an object or a control in the database, and it is executed when an event triggers it.